that all living things make waste? Well, sure. Birds do it. Bees do it. Uh, even things like trees do it. But there's one animal that makes a lot of waste. I'll bet you know which one that is. Uh-huh. Whoa, 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 what's going on? Whoa! Careful. Bill Nye, the science guy. Inertia is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Brought to you by Garbage. Garbage. It's what you don't need now. Just walking through the forest, doing a little cleaning up. That's right. Nature makes waste, too. You might not think of it as waste at first because it's so much more, well, uh, natural. But it's still waste, especially if it lands on your shoulder. Whoa, it's a close one. See, all living things make waste. Plants, animals, and humans. Just that humans are making garbage that doesn't break down. Things that we know and love that are garbage today will be garbage tomorrow. Probably garbage for a lot of tomorrows. Now, in this country, in the United States, we're making trash at the rate of about two kilograms a day for every person who lives here. There are about 250 million people, 365 days a year. That's about half a billion kilograms of trash every day. That's almost uh, 750 kilograms of trash for every person who lives here. Now, in a forest, there's waste too, right? There's leaves and pine cones, things like that. In a forest, waste builds up at about half a kilogram a year on every square meter. That's a lot less, isn't it? Sea otters, when they're done with their shellfish, they just throw the shell away. Snakes, when they're done with their skin every few months, they just leave it lying around. Now, everybody wants a cold drink once in a while, but half a billion kilograms a day? That's a lot of trash. things make waste. It's just that humans are the only species that make non-biodegradable waste. Here's a look at some of the natural solid waste that nature takes care of on its own. material is eventually left behind as the animal moves on. Some of the garbage we make is biodegradable, like carrot peels, moldy onions, and leaves. Why don't you put your food waste into a worm bin and put your yard waste into a compost pile? Make great soil for the garden. It's pretty easy to make. Just recycle some old pallets from a warehouse. Or you can make a little fence with chicken wire. No matter what it looks like, when stuff starts breaking down, it gets really hot. So you should get a shovel and mix things up once in a while. In about a year, you'll have great soil for your garden. Hey, Jafar, want to go for a ride? Yeah. Why are you? OK, we're scooping up some yard waste here. Then we grind them up using our big mechanical cow. Dirt is yard waste from people's gardens and grass clippings. 
It's brought out here, mixed with water, so that the decomposing microorganisms can work on it for about a year. Well, it's sold back to people in the city so they can use it in their gardens. So check it out. The cycle is closed. It comes from the city, it's decomposed, and goes back to the city. It's recycled compost. Isn't that great? As you can see, all living things make waste. In a typical forest, nature builds up trash about 20 centimeters a year. In a typical landfill, humans build up trash about 20 centimeters per week. This is the Fresh Hills Landfill on Staten Island, New York. It's the largest garbage dump in the world. 15 million kilograms of garbage roll into this landfill every day. Plastic bags are the most seen pieces of garbage. And right now, it's twice as tall as the Statue of Liberty. No, really. Nature makes about half a kilo of trash for every square meter of forest floor every year. Now, that's for everybody. Trees, leaves, weeds, birds, squirrels, bears, and bees. Everything. Half a kilo a year. Humans make two kilos of trash for every human every day. Something's out of balance here. Whoa. I hate it's cleaning rude. up other people's messes. I think everybody should just clean up their own mess. Being Native American and knowing that this area at one point, before all these buildings were here, were the first peoples, the aboriginal peoples of this area, the Duwamish, the Muckleshoot, the Suquamish, who lived here when the river was curvy and there was no big buildings and there were canoes. According to native legend, there used to be so many salmon in the river that you could walk from one side of the river to the other on the backs of the fish. There's people still here that fish and they, they live off of fishing and after a while there won't be any fish, so what are they going to do? Like most people, they're polluted and they're trying to teach the kids now not to pollute the water. You might want to try to teach the young ones that you have at home, like your baby cousin or your little brother or your little sister, and try to get them into science and helping the environment because they're going to be the future. Mother Earth needs our help! There's a lot of garbage in a big city like this. Most of the time, you just look past it. But sometimes, you're hired to follow it. My name is Luna Van Dyke. It's a Dutch name, and it means trouble. I'm a detective. I didn't know who that guy was, but that bottle was recyclable, so I decided to follow it. Luna Van Dyke goes undercover as Greta Garbin in Paper, Plastic, or Bullets. Coming soon to a theater near you. A lot of the waste we make is biodegradable. It breaks down. <laughs> Things like potato peelings, chicken bones, and some kinds of paper. But other waste we make doesn't break down. It's non-biodegradable. Stuff like plastic bags, plastic-coated corrugated cardboard, and plastic soft drink bottles. If it's trash today, it'll be trash tomorrow. And most of it ends up here. This is a landfill. Uh, about 40% of this is paper that we toss out. About 28% of it is stuff left over from building buildings that we just throw away. And less than 1% of it is that styrene foam, like in these cups. We make so much trash, there's even trash on the moon. 
Human beings can't help but make waste. I mean, we're living things. But the more waste we make, the more places we have to find to put it. And one day, we may run out of places. So the less we make, and the more we reuse and recycle, the better. Because the more we can keep our planet clean now, it'll mean a lot less work later. So let's get started. What do you say? Right here. One step at a time. Solid waste isn't the only kind of garbage messing up the earth. There's also fuel spills and oil spills and refrigerant leaks. And the exhaust from cars, trucks, trains, buses, and planes is polluting our atmosphere. That's garbage. But right here on Earth, there's problems, too. In this landfill, there's all kinds of weird liquids. And they work their way down through the landfill. It's called leaching. Now, if things go wrong, that goop can end up in the water supply. Now, this landfill has a leachate recovery system, something to keep that from happening. But not all landfills have that. And so some of our soil is getting messed up. We do have choices. Come on, say them with me. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Hey, it makes sense. Check it out. You can reuse an old soda pop bottle to make a terrarium. A terrarium is like an aquarium, only it has driven plants instead of fish and water. Here's what you do. Get an adult to help you cut a soda pop bottle so you have a little flat like this. Then add some dirt. Then add a plant. And some water. And maybe a couple of bugs. Tape the bottle back up. And put it in your room. In about a month, the plants will grow and you'll have more bugs. Things may die, but that's okay, it's part of science. Making a terrarium out of an old soda bottle. It's like having a mini jungle in your room. All living things make waste. Unfortunately, not all waste humans make is biodegradable. That's why we need to practice the three R's. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. It's not that hard. That's right. Every day in this country, we make enough garbage to fill a convoy of trucks that would reach from Chicago to New York. That's a lot of trucks. That's a lot of garbage. That's a lot of nose. Hi, I'm Bill Conrad from Conrad Industries. Yeah, I'm standing on top of a mound of rubber tire chips, and we're transforming this material back into oil, gases, and carbon. Close your door! Rubber tires have been very, very difficult to recycle. This is oil from a rubber tire chip. Our next big challenge is to take other waste products, plastic waste products, and convert those waste products back to oil. We can take this mixed plastic and put it into our system and convert it back to oil, back again into plastic. Our machine will handle this type of waste product. And here it is, mm. the oil that we've taken from plastic. We have converted the plastic back into oil for complete plastic recycling. Our system is total and complete recycling. This is total plastic recycling. Plastic recycling. What? Recycling. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> Cars run on gasoline, oil, and antifreeze. How would you like to eat that stuff? Well, sometimes fish have to. Hang on, hang on. Uh, you shouldn't pour antifreeze down storm drains because a lot of times that stuff flows right into the nearest body of water. You should recycle it. Okay. Hey, thanks. 
See, fish don't like to have that stuff for lunch. Of course, no fish has ever told me that. I mean, no, no one's ever said it to me, but, but I've hung out with them a lot, and I, I get that impression. What? We have to take care of our environment. Do you realize that just one quart of this stuff can make a slick big enough to cover two acres? And it really doesn't look very good. It kills plankton and fish and whales and octopi and all sorts of stuff. It's really a mess. Another reason we don't want to pollute water is because we drink it, and it just doesn't seem to taste as good mm. Mm. with waste in it. Oh. Watch this. I'll pour all the cereal out of the large box and put it on this side of the balance. Now I'll pour the cereal out of the single serving boxes on this side. So as much cereal is in one big box equals 24 little boxes. Okay, let's weigh the boxes. The cereal weighs the same, but the big box uses less cardboard, a lot less. Look, you can get an idea of how much cereal is in a box by looking at what scientists call the net weight. Net, as in net weight, is from the Middle English word for neat. So the net weight of the cereal is the weight of just the cereal, without all those messy boxes. The bigger the net weight, the more cereal, the less box. Buying a bigger box is a great way to do the first R, reduce. Reuse it. Recycle it. Brought to you by the three R's. Yeah, that's fine, though. Uh, we're rolling. You know, all this talk about trash and garbage has gotten me thinking. Uh-huh. Maybe that's what we need a little bit more of. A little more thinking. Thinking. You need to think about what happens to something after we throw it away. You know, people get so caught up in the convenience of an item that they throw it away without even thinking. You see, most of it ends up in a landfill. You see what I'm saying? I mean, look at all this stuff. There's plastic bags full of aluminum cans that could have been recycled. Construction waste from people building houses. All this stuff that could be put to some useful purpose, but no, it's going to end up here. Buried. Buried. Maybe not forever, but for a very, very long time. Now, what's the point of that? So what we got to do, we got to stop and realize the effect of what we're doing because we could probably make use of this material and we would just get our head in the game. But no, we should pay attention. We've got to pay attention. Oh, I should pull back. <sighs> get a little carried away there. Whoa, what, what's going on? Hey, 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 whoa! whoa! Uh-huh. So now that we're all familiar with the three R's, here's just one more. Rethink before you buy something. If a product can't be recycled, think before you buy it and remind yourself where it may end up.
fun talking trash with you this week. Just want you to know here at Nye Laboratories, reducing, reusing, and recycling aren't just words. They're the way we work. All our cans and paper are recycled. That's this week's script. We're done with it. All our props are reused. Our budgets are reduced. And our jokes, well, they're recycled. Hey, what do you guys say we reuse last week's credits? Yeah! Well, thanks for hanging out. Bye. See ya. Bye! Bye. Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. Well, that's our show. Remember, hey, dinosaurs. Well, that's our show. Remember, hey. Hey, we know dinosaurs once lived because we found their fossilized bones. Hey, humans were came along. Who's next? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Well, that's our show. Sorry. A, we know that dinosaurs once lived because we found their fossilized bones. We dug them up. <laughs>